Hello everyone, we're going to be working on 13.7 uh, today, which is area under a curve, it's exact area under a curve, and we're going to be doing this by using the limit definition, uh, which is mostly what you were working on in Objective 6. So what we're doing here is just tying in Objective 6 to the idea that that represents area and how to come up with that um, um, uh, equation by yourself. So what we did before this was we were working with rectangles of um, varying sizes or you know a limited number of rectangles so maybe we use two or four or five or ten um, and all that ever did was approximate the area under the curve. So what we want to do now is find the exact area under the curve. And the way we do that is by um, increasing the number of rectangles to so many that their widths become very, very small. So um, if you look here, I have a graph and my, um, my definition here, which says f is a continuous and non-negative function on the closed interval a, b. Then the area of the region bound between the function, the x-axis, and the lines x equals a and x equals b can be given by uh, this formula. So we take the limit as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. Uh, and what we'd like to do is find uh, the sum of the areas of all the rectangles. So from the first to the nth rectangle. And the area of each rectangle is represented um, this way. So we know that the width of each rectangle is delta x, change in x. So this is given by b minus a divided by n. So this is the width of the interval, b minus a, okay? And then divided by n is dividing by the number of rectangles. So that'll give me the width of each rectangle. The next thing we have is that um, everywhere in between a and b, there is some rectangle located there, and that rectangle is in the c sub i position. So um, to find that position, you start at the beginning of your interval a, and then you would add the width of every rectangle i times until you get to your rectangle. Um, and so the height of each rectangle, if c sub i is the location of each rectangle, so the height of each rectangle is f of c sub i. And so in our formula here, we have the sum of the areas is the sum of the height of each rectangle times the width of each rectangle. So that's what these things are here. So we have height times width, and that gives us area. Um, and so this now is just how you get those things. So the width of each is delta x, which is b minus a divided by n. The height is f of c sub i, and c sub i is found by this formula, a plus delta x times i. So we're gonna work through some examples here, um, and that will tell us the area, and I wanted to fill this in. We get the area here, and it just falls right under the curve, and it follows the curve, fills in all the available space, and gives us the exact area. And that is what we're trying to find. So, um, in example number one, we're going to use the function x squared plus one on the interval negative one, two. Uh, and it might be a good idea to make sure um, nobody's going to give you a, a problem that doesn't work, but Remember that this only works for functions that are continuous, so remember that definition of continuity and non-negative, meaning um, that the curve is either on or above the x-axis on that interval. So x squared plus 1 is always positive. So just to get an idea of what we're looking at here, from negative 1 on over to 2, we are trying to find the area here under this curve on this interval. 
So this is what we're looking at. So I can see that this area does exist. It has some value, right? There is space here under this curve and on that interval. And that's what we're looking to find. So we're gonna start with our area formula. So we're gonna write it down here. So we take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from one to n of f of c sub i times delta x. So we're gonna work this stuff out on the side. We're gonna start with uh, finding delta x first. So delta x was, remember, b minus a divided by n. So in our problem, a and b is the interval negative one, two. So we have two minus negative one divided by n. So this turns into three divided by n. So that's delta x. Step two is to calculate um, c sub i. So be careful with this. c sub i is not the next part that we need. It's just the inside here of f of c sub i. So this formula was a plus delta x times i. In this case, a is negative one. Uh, delta x is three over n and then we multiply by i. So I could write this as 3i over n minus 1. Now that's just uh, c sub i, and what we need is f of c sub i. So what this means is we're plugging 3i over n minus 1 into function f in place of x. So it becomes 3i over n minus 1 squared plus 1. So we're going to work this out. Squaring our binomial, we get 3i over n times 3i over n is 9i squared over n squared. The outside inside terms are both negative 3i over n, so together they make negative 6i over n. And negative 1 times itself is positive 1. Then we still have the plus 1 out here, so that'll be a plus 2. So that's f of c sub i. So I'm going to come back over here and plug these things into my formula. So I have 9i squared over n squared minus 6i over n plus 2. And then we multiply with delta x, which was 3 over n. And now all of this is inside of our sum, which is inside of So now it looks like a problem we were working on from objective six. From here on, the problem works out the same way as before. So we'll go ahead and uh, start by multiplying the insides together. Uh, so that's gonna give me 27i squared over n cubed minus 18i over n squared plus 6 over n. So now we use our summation properties and um, we're going to split up each sum. So each piece here is going to split up. And maybe at the same time, I'll take out the constants and leave in only the i terms. So this is now the limit as n approaches infinity. And we have um, the sum from one to n. And the only thing in here that's i is i squared. So i squared will stay inside and we will take out 27 over n cubed. From the next one, for this sum, the only i term is i itself. So 18 over n squared is the constant that gets taken out. And for the last one, there is no i term. So we'll take out six over n. And my sum, that will just leave behind a one. Okay, so both summation properties were used here at the same time. The last thing we'll do is use our summation formulas and make our substitutions. So we look back um, at your previous notes or at the top of, I think it was worksheet six, and you have these formulas here that we're gonna make substitutions with. So my limit as n approaches infinity, it starts with 27 over n cubed times the formula for i squared, 
which is um, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. So let's keep going. 18 over n squared times n times n plus 1 over 2 and then uh, plus, sorry, 6 over n times the formula here is the constant 1 times n, which is just n. So the last part of the problem here is just to evaluate uh, the limit of each piece individually. So uh, for the first term, I have 27 n times n times 2 n. So 27 times 2 and then n cubed over 6n cubed. Those would be my leading terms, same highest power. So we get the leading coefficients and this is going to be 9. In the next term I have 18 n squared over 2n squared. Again, same highest powers. So my leading coefficients, 18 over 2, again is 9. And last, uh, same highest power, n over n. So my limit here is 6. And then this gives us a total of 6. And that is the exact area under our curve on the interval negative 1, 2. We're going to do one more problem together. This problem comes from worksheet 7. It's problem number 54. The function is defined as 2x minus x cubed on the interval 0, 1. Um, if you want to verify what this graph looks like, um, you might graph it by remembering that a cubic polynomial with a negative leading coefficient starts high and ends low. If you do a little bit of factoring, um, we can take out an x and we can find that our x-intercepts are 0 and plus and minus root 2. So on a quick sketch over here, 0, negative root 2, and positive root 2, and then a high to low. So just keep in mind that root 2 is bigger than 1, so the interval 0 to 1 is right in here, and we are trying to find uh, the area here of this little bit of region. So remember, it's important to know that your function is continuous and non-negative on the defined interval, which it is. And in that case, we can uh, start the area process. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x. So over here on the side, we'll start working out first um, the value of delta x, which is b minus a over n. 1 minus 0 over n is 1 over n. So that's the first part. Next is finding c sub i, which is a plus delta x times i. So we have 0 plus 1 over n times i, which is just i over n. So now the important part, f of c sub i, or f of i over n. So plugging i over n into function f, or into our function, in place of the x values here, becomes 2 times i over n minus i over n cubed. So I can simplify this to 2i over n minus i cubed over n cubed. And that now goes into my function as well. So here we have 2i over n minus i cubed over n cubed times out front delta x, which is 1 over n. All right, so all of that is now in my sum which is in my limit to find the area. So um, again, 
this picks up where we were in objective six, and now it's just about using our properties and formulas to break this down and then evaluate the limits. So inside, we multiply all of this together. So it becomes 2i over n squared. So I'm just distributing 1 over n inside here, minus i cubed over n to the fourth power. I'm now going to use my summation properties um, to split up my sums, and at the same time, take out my constants. So for the first sum, I will stay 2 over n squared is taken out. The next piece, I cubed will stay and 1 over n to the fourth is taken out. All right, so next is using our formulas. So we have the sum for I and the sum for I cubed. So starting with our limit as n goes to infinity, out front we have here 2 over n squared, and then my sum for i is n times n plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over n to the fourth times my sum for i cubed, which is n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. All right, my last step is to evaluate the limits, and we're gonna do that separately for each of these. For the first one, we have two times n times n, which is two n squared. On the bottom, two n squared. So highest power is the same, two over two is just one. For the next piece, we have one n squared times n squared. So that's one n to the fourth over four n to the fourth. Again, with the same highest leading power, our ratio of the leading coefficients reduces to one fourth. So remember that this is a minus, minus one fourth. One minus one fourth uh, is three fourths, and that is in fact the area under our function on the interval zero, one.